Hey, Brian, when you were first evaluating Deuce Vaughn, can you remember what you saw on tape that made you really think we want this guy? Well, when I first saw him on tape, I, I looked at his size first. And um, I was concerned a little bit. I didn't know what the, th the guys would think about him. So I was pretty close to not showing his video. But uh, as I watched it, I saw a guy who could um, make all the runs, short yardage runs, home runs, and uh, catch the ball in the backfield. And uh, so when I brought it to the table to show the guys, uh, that was my biggest concern was what they thought about his size. But then once they watched it, they really liked what, he, what, what, he, what they saw. And then uh, we pushed on to Coach Kleiman, and he went to offer right away. I know you guys had high expectations for him, but is there anything he's done that surprised even you thus far? Well, I think there's been a couple runs, some short yardage runs, where um, he was able to get some tough yards. You know, we had a third and two uh, against TCU the other day, and uh, he was able to get three yards out of it. He had a uh, swing pass against uh, Texas, Texas Tech and was able to – guy made contact behind the, behind the uh, first down, and he was able to push forward to get the first down. So his lower body strength has been a very surprise and very pleasing. And, and nobody else in the room cared about his size after you showed him the tape? They're all – well, obviously you have concerns about protections and those kind of things, but uh, his playmaking ability was the overwhelming factor in that. Okay. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate it. You bet. John? Hey, Brian, what's what's the upper limit as far as touches that you guys would be comfortable with, with Deuce taking in a game right now? Well, I think we can get up to 20, uh, either by carries or catching the ball. Um, I think um, – as the game goes, I don't worry about a pitch count with him. Uh, just if he's running hot, you got to feed him just like any other back. But the thing that's really nice is you don't have to take him out on, on passing downs because his, his uh, pass catching skills out of the backfield. And so I think if you can get him, you know, five or six catches and get him 17, 18 carries a game, I think that's pretty good. And right now, how far is Jacardier off of, of seeing the field a little bit more and getting more playing time? Well, I think it's a day-by-day -day process. I mean, he's still developing. Um, and, and the thing about running backs is when you got a guy like Deuce who can take a handoff and possibly hit a home run, uh, catch a ball in the backfield, hit a home run, it's hard to take those guys off the field right now. So uh, as Jacardi, we practice this week, he's going to get a lot of reps. So we're still uh, getting his development. And, and uh, he's coming along, you know. And the thing about him is – I try to continue to tell him I need you to be a different kind of back than Deuce. You know, you're 200 some pounds. You know, look at you more as a pounder. Don't worry about trying to hit home runs on the outside. If you can run between the tackles, very you know, being consistent doing those things, that's going to help us in the long run. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. You bet. Derek. You have another true freshman back. You play a little bit in Keon Mosey. Are you just as excited about him in terms of the trajectory he's on? If uh, compared to your expectations coming in? Oh, yeah. Very, very pleased with him. You know, when, you, when a guy runs 10, 500 meters, uh, he, he threatens a lot of people. And uh, he's continued to develop. We're using him more in the passing game, getting him and Deuce on the field at the same time because they're both threats, uh, catching the ball in the backfield or running some type of jet sweep or something like that. So he's continued to develop and very pleased where he's at right now. Is it a situation that we could see him and Deuce on the field together even more to kind of provide that dynamic ability? Yeah, as we go, you know, as their workload gets gets more and and uh, how, the, how the game goes also dictates some of that stuff and, on where we're at in the game. But uh, I think you can see more of that as, as the season goes on. Thanks, Coach. It's – Coach, this is the second straight year that you've entered the season kind of wondering about who are going to be the backs. And second straight season, here we are early in the year, and you're wondering, how am I going to get all these guys on the field? Is this a good problem to have, to have so many guys that are emerging and playing well? Yeah, it's a great problem to have. You know, I looked at a couple of things this morning as far as where Deuce is lining up on the field. Now where is Mosey lining up on the field? Now where is Harry lining up on the field? Now you add Jacardi to the pitcher. You know, when you get opportunity to get that, that many guys on the field at different spots, it just helps your offense because now people can put their focus maybe on Deuce. A couple of times on Saturday, you know, they had him double teamed with a defensive end and a linebacker. Well, it opened up some things for, for other guys. So uh, when you can move guys around and use their skill set, uh, it just helps your offense as a whole. 
when you have these kind of varied skill sets, uh, how hard is it to use the guys in ways that you don't become predictable by personnel? Well, that's one thing I look at during the week uh, as we move Deuce around, where is he lining up at the most? And so I try to put him in spots or maybe change that position out with a Mosey or a Harry and put those guys in that spot and put Deuce in, others, in a different spot and run the same play. So people can't say, well, he's, already, he's always in the slot and he's doing this. He's always in the backfield. When the back's away, he's doing this. So I try to move him around a little bit so people can't get a hand on where he's going to be at and what plays we're running. Thanks, Coach. Last one here, Kellis. Tell us some of the little things that I'm sure Harry Trotter does really well that maybe the common fan doesn't see when they're just watching the game from afar. Well, you know, Harry, is, is a, he's a workaholic. And the thing that he brings to the table for us, um, he can do a little bit of everything. You know, he had one of the best cut blocks on Saturday that I've seen in football in a long time. On the Phillip Brooks had an end around, and Harry came out and cut the guy down. It was textbook. And, and so his, his play is great leadership for our room. And what I mean by that is, you know, he goes about his business every single day. He doesn't say two words, but he just wants to get better. He sent me a text this morning, Coach, what I need to do this week to get better. You know, so he's always looking to get better. And so uh, his maturity, uh, his knowledge of the offense is uh, continue to, to help our room and help our younger guys out. He's always there for Deuce to help him out if he sees something on the field that Deuce didn't see. You know, so his, his leadership is invaluable. Thanks much, Brian. Appreciate